With the release of Appleton Live 10, the Appleton team have took huge steps yet again in improving this already brilliant door. So there is some notable improvements, for example, adding in the new synth wavetable, but it is the subtle little workflow improvements which I feel all really help um, all those producers and composers out there. So one of them which I've really liked and I've often done on my own in the past is the collections or favorites tabs. On the In the past, I have previously just had folders in the places for all my favorite drums from all over um, my hard drives and all my favorite presets, which can get quite messy. And if you accidentally rename a folder, it can go missing. So up here in the top, you can see the collections within the browser. I've already named a few. And for example, if you have a favorite drum kit and if there's some free folders, you can see you have seven, you can actually add it and rename it. So this could be called Fave Drums. And we could all our and we could add all our favorite drum hits, all our favorite drum samples, drum loops, um, all the different kits we've made over time in there. We can also have the same for our favorite presets. We also have, which is brilliant, a new MIDI capture. So anyone who gets red light syndrome, so as soon as that record button goes on, they freeze up and just cannot play. This is brilliant for you. So I can simply play the loop I've got and then try and play with this chord stab. And oh no, I forgot to record, but all you have to do is hit the MIDI capture. And you see, it's remembered everything. So I can bring it back to the point I want and just drag this along and let's just have a two bar loop. And from there, I can just quantize it by selecting everything. Now, I think that would bring us nicely on to looking at the wavetable synth. So this sound is actually created using that wavetable synth. In this wavetable synth, we've got a huge multitude of different wavetables to work from. They're very nicely categorized where we can have something very simplistic and basic to all our um, all out craziness with some of these more distorted uh, wavetables. And then we get our normal subtractive uh, elements like our filter um, and we have our modulation with LFO and amplitude and you'll see that is all added by this very cool matrix. So you can create, so with this wavetable synth you can create all manner of sounds the drums, apart from the 909, are actually all created with this wavetable synth. So you can get very nice electronic drum sounds. You can also get really cool bass sounds. Plucked leads. And very cool evolving pads. And you'll probably have noticed I've also included in these presets the brilliant pedal tool. Often what I do in my own home studio is use a series of different pedal effects from guitars different guitar pedal effects to achieve a nice warm raw sound. But with this pedal in there, we have a choice of overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. Which can give you a real nice analog feel to your tracks. Speaking of analog, we've now got a classic echo, we've now got a classic echo delay unit in there 
which is perfect for adding in some old school delays where we can actually drive the input we can add a reverb unit as well, as well as some old wobble to feel like the tape is moving. And probably one of the best features of this Echo is the ducking system. So if we bring up a simple sound like our snare, and we add in our echo and if you're going to use the echo a lot you can add it into your favorites collection from there what we can do is have the delay on so i'm going to have it 50 50 roughly and a lot of reverb and what can happen is the reverb can muddy up the sound but within the characters in this ducking we can actually control that so the sound won't come in for 100 milliseconds or 200, 300, up to a second we can have it there. And that'll be very nice. And it'll fade in, giving you a very nice effect. And some subtle changes to some of the already pre-existing audio effects can have a huge change to some of your sounds. For example, you have this brilliant utility effect, which I use a lot. And now you actually have a straight up mono button as well as a bass mono, which is going to be brilliant if you're creating multi-layered bass sounds where you have a sub, a mid and a high, where you want the lows, where you want the sub to be very mono and the rest could be quite nicely spread out. You also have on your EQ the ability to go all the way down to 10 hertz, which means you can really control your low end and cut out any sub rumble. And... What we haven't looked at yet is the brilliant drum bus. The drum bus really helps enhance your drum sounds. Where you can drive it, add some subtle compression, really crunch the sound. And also, which I really like is the boom. You can actually focus this on your note of your kick drum and then increase the frequency there. And that'll add you, and that'll give you an absolute ginormous kick drum. Another brilliant tweak in Live 10 is the ability to actually go through and edit multiple clips at once. So you can see here, I've got my Womp bass and I've also got the stab chords up here and we can actually edit them together which is brilliant so you could have a uh, very complex counter melodies working together and you can see them on one screen rather than having to jump back and forth which can be very fiddly i've been using live 10 now for a few months and to be honest it's really helped my production not just the big things like wavetable and the echo but the little things like we've just discussed is editing midi together as well as the collections is brilliant i hope you've enjoyed this preview on apple in live 10. if you've enjoyed any of these features and would like to go more in depth why not subscribe to subbase online